going through this plastic and reflecting off the blanket, but it's being held inside that shelter by the plastic. So you've got a little bit of a backstop here that's made out of log just to keep all of your stuff, all of your heat from going out. It's kind of reflecting. It's not going to reflect. They call these reflectors. They don't really reflect heat. They kind of hold heat more than they reflect it. When the log wall gets heated up, you're getting some benefit from that heat. So you're almost heating that log wall up. You're really not reflecting anything off of it. To reflect the heat, it would have to have a mirror surface, and it doesn't. So you're basically just holding some of your heat into these logs, and you need a very small fire, but it needs to be the length of the shelter. That way you've got the same amount of heat at the back as you do at the front, and you don't need to feed it a lot. Now you can take this log I've got in the front here, and you could actually roll this to the inside instead of I've got it rolled to the outside for this demonstration. But if you had this rolled on the inside, theoretically you could just lift this up and feed the fire without having to get out of the shelter. Okay, mm -hmm. but the key is is to trap that heat inside, but you've got to give yourself a little bit of release for the carbon dioxide. So you've got, you can regulate the heat inside there by opening up these sides a little bit and letting some air flow in and out of there. But what I want you guys to do is I want you to take turns getting inside the shelter. Just get inside from that end. I want you to feel what it feels like inside here because a shelter like this weighs less than two pounds that you can carry in your pack. All you have to have is a two or three mil, nine by, this is a nine by 12, I think, uh, painter's tarp from the hardware store, it's four bucks. And the space blanket's like 20 bucks. Roll that up in some cordage, and as long as you got your axe, you know, even if you get into a crappy situation, you can sleep through the night like this. And what we're going to do tonight is, um, I would like to build one of these for every two people. Stay in the teams that you were in the other day when you did the nav exercise, and one person can stay out here beside the fire and feed the fire while the other person sleeps for two or three hours, and then you guys can switch out. That way, that person never has to get out of here to feed the fire until they're gonna be out of there for a couple hours. The disadvantage to me with a shelter like this is number one, it's gotta be stinking cold. Because when you get in this shelter, you're gonna feel, it's probably 75 in this shelter right now. And we just started this fire 20 minutes ago. So it'll be 90 in here within no time at all. It's gonna be 90 degrees inside the shelter. You're not gonna to wanna to sleep like that and then get out of that to feed the fire and get back in and get out and get in and get out because you're gonna catch pneumonia. You know, I would much rather be comfortably cold when I'm sleeping you know, and be 50 to 60 degrees. And you can control that a little bit with this fire. And as the fire goes down, it's going to cool down inside. But eventually, you're still going to have to get out of that 70 or 80 degrees that you've got in there and feed this fire for a little while to get it built back up and then crawl inside. If we do a team exercise tonight where one guy's sleeping, one guy's feeding the fire, you guys will be better off, I think. And there's plenty of heat right here for the guy who's feeding the fire. You know, he can sit here and walk around and keep his body core temperature regulated easy enough, just like this. But the guy that's in here, is going to sleep like a baby. So what I want you guys to do is kind of take turns crawling the night in the shelter and get in there for uh, two, three minutes or until you can't stand it anymore and then get out and let the next guy in. So you understand seconds. the power of the shelter. <laughs> 15 seconds was enough for me. <laughs> and also, you can use this slit here as like a thermostat. You get a little too warm, just crack this open. How warm is that, dude? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I can sleep like a baby in here, man. Oh yeah. Well, you have to take turns. Now, the other problem you've got with shelters like this is you have to regulate is condensation, okay? If you're just using plastic and mylar, you're gonna have condensation inside that shelter. Anything wet you put in there for material, like leaves for the ground for your leaf bed or anything like that, because you, you really need a four inch leaf bed inside this shelter, compressed. The only way you're gonna get true be able to battle conduction thoroughly is to have four inches of compressed material in there to separate you from the ground. Otherwise, the ground's going to start robbing heat from you. So you got to put a pretty good sized pile of leaves in there about this high before you lay on it, then it's going to crush down. So I generally just fill that thing up. Two trash bags is what we used, I think, when Jeremy and I were working on this. We used two full 55 gallon bags of leaves inside here and then squashed it down. What are you thinking, brother? Wow. Too hot for me in here. <laughs> That's the way I am, man. This is way too hot of a shelter for me. But for someone who's not used to being out in the cold, or for someone who is not prepared for an emergency, you know, maybe you got wet or something like that, to build a shelter or to be able to build a shelter like this can do a lot for you on a really, really cold winter's night. Okay, we're out here on uh, day three of the intermediate class. This is the instructor camp over here. And this is what I would call a proper wood pile for the night. We got about a pickup truck load over there and we got a long fire going already here. Of course the instructors 
probably just sleep beside the fire on the ground. I'm not going to set up too much tonight because we got to keep fire watch over everybody else. But my concern is that the rest of these guys, and they're working in four man teams, don't have near this much wood. <laughs> How you doing, Sarah? Oh, fine. Good. <laughs> well, Matt Mahoney over here getting his fire going. He's working on some fat wood right now. There are a lot of fat wood and fat wood and a ferro rod to start their fire tonight. He's already got his shelter set up. Good size wood pile going here. Not quite big enough, but they're still collecting. They got a good pile of leaves inside that shelter. They're gonna go with the super shelter concept tonight. One person in, one person out. Another shelter over here is not even close yet. It's gonna be one person in, one person out. So you'll have two people feeding the fire while two people are sleeping. Should be a pretty easy night if they prepare correctly. All right, we got about a tenth of a truckload of wood here. And a little more wood over there. One shelter set up in here with a space blanket underneath it. Underneath the oil skin tarp, clearing out an area for a fire. This guy's got a nice thick wool blanket from Pennsylvania. He's gonna be nice and toasty tonight, no matter what. Two young boys here from Indiana, trying to get it rocking. On little to nothing, but that's okay. That's what it's all about. Get that mylar blanket set up, get a fire going, get a bed of leaves in there and they'll be all right. They got a wool blanket. All right, boys, so what do you think? Are we smoothing it over here? Yeah, totally. Sure. Totally smoothing it? You got... In our socks, making some hot chocolate. <laughs> nice. Roll down for the night. Yeah. Nice. So a nice long fire going there. You got two big old piles of firewood. Got a super shelter on that side and a modified shelter over here with a space blanket inside of an oil cloth. Big leaf bed in there. Man, oh man. In this shelter right here, I can feel the warmth right here. So can you? Put my hand in there. Oh, yeah. Well, you guys got this pretty well locked in. I mean, you don't have much cross breeze on your fire, but it's locking a lot of the heat in because you got it blocked over there and blocked over here. Yep. Yeah. So you're locking a lot of heat in there. And you're sitting around that fire. You're smoothing it, man. Golly. Good job, boys. Thanks, dude. Good job. Thanks, dude. Over here at the old instructor camp, you want to talk about smoothing it. Look at the coal bed and the side meat in that frying pan. Golly. Nice long fire. We laid out here. We got more to cook. Like a bunch of codfish on the beach here later on. Look at this the amount of side meat. Golly. Mm -mm -mm. Master Chef Christopher Wick on the skillet. Mr. Baxter in the background over there. Jeremy Janey setting up his camp there. Man. There's another one. And that was where. So young man, how come you're out of the super shelter there? You just woke up or you it was too hot in there? Um then you got I, tired of laying down. Yeah. <laughs> you got tired of laying down. Okay, well there's nothing wrong with that. Still How's Miss Sierra doing in there? She been stirring? I think she's still sleeping. Awake. Still awake? How, how warm is it in there, Sarah? I'm warm, I just Well, that's alright. It's pretty early to be falling asleep. Nice over here. Nice and warm over there? Yep. Good. Alright. How are we doing it over here in the smoothing at camp? It's really good. Oh, man. You have Baker's bundle wrapped up here. Yeah, I don't man. even need a freaking Baker's bundle. Be sleeping this. here good for tonight. Nice. So you guys aren't even basically using the shelter, you're just smoothing it right outside. That's right. There ain't nothing wrong with that, guys. Yeah, if I was wet at all, I'd be just dry. Right now, yeah. man. That's good. Fire good, good. So I like to hear. What's going on, boys? It's melting a little bit, but. Fire was too big, huh? Yeah. Oof. Yeah, it was almost bad. Just definitely couldn't sleep in there. But it dried my socks out like that. <laughs> hmm. But that's lesson learned. We'll know better next time. That's a fact. Definitely warm in there, though, ain't it? Oh my god! Yeah. Drive you out? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> I was zonked out maybe 10, 15 minutes here and there, on and off. Yep. But, uh, 
Yeah, I put the my sock over the ridge line. I kind of woke up once and my feet was cold up under one. I was like, ow, too hot, too hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a... Here we are at the instructor camp. A little after 5 o'clock in the morning, we're all stirring up here. And fire's still rocking and rolling. Chris hooking up some coffee over here on the old tripod. The would-be fire pile from last night has went from a truckload to about five or six logs. Still got a good big fire here though. We just stoked it back up, so judged the wood just about right for the night, I'd say. Smoothing it. All right, it's about six o'clock at the instructor camp. We're getting ready to get all the folks up out there in the super shelters. Buddy Kevin Baxter over there pulling a Simon Kenton against the tree there. Hunkered down. I've been sleeping right here on this little blanket shard all night. If you dress properly for the weather and you got a good fire, you really don't have to have a shelter. We're starting to get some pretty good snow right now. Jeremy Jane and Chris Wicker camped right there together. Go over and see how everybody's doing this morning. How you doing this morning, sir? Good, sir. Do all right last night? Great. No problem. Okay. Huh? Good. Miss Sierra, how'd you do last night? Um, what? We got not very good. We got not up. very good. How come? It's cold. cold. <laughs> How was that shelter? Was it warm enough? Was Blanket was warm enough. <laughs> Matt, how'd you do, buddy? Stumbling out this morning. <laughs> do all right last night? Sarah, this is only, what, the second time you've ever camped out in your life? Well, you picked a good time to do it, that's for sure. How'd you do last night, young man? Good. Good? Yeah. All right. Nice white covering on the old oil skin this morning. Yep. You guys do all right last night? Oh, yeah. Sure did. Get some sleep? Good? Nice. Still got one guy in the shelter over here and one guy stumbling out over here. Not too shabby. All right, getting ready to pack them up. Still got plenty of firewood left. That's a good sign. Yeah. Nice. Nice.